Dear Lord, here we are again gathered together where two or three are gathered. We know your Holy Spirit is with us. Even when we're as an individual, the Holy Spirit is with us. But we thank you, Lord, that uh, as the three of you are one, that you can uh, join our three minds, four minds together, and that we may become one in harmony, in unison, in thought. As we pray through Micah and, and talk about the prediction of your coming as our King and our Savior, we mm -hmm. pray, the Lord, that you will give us insights tonight and make connections in other parts of Scripture that we haven't seen before, and that uh, we will get a special blessing through this uh, these few moments that we have to study together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Micah 5, verse 1. Now gather thyselves in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid seas against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrath, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she with travaileth hath brought forth, then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Verse 4. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall abide. For now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. And this man shall be the peace when the Assyrian shall come into our land, and when he shall tread in our palaces. Then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword and the land of Nimrod and the entrances thereof. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian when he cometh into our land and when he treadeth within our borders. Verse 7. Then the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people, like the dew from the Lord, like showers on the grass, which delay not for a man, nor wait for the children of a man. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the nations in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among the flocks of sheep, which, when it goes through, treads down and tears in pieces, and there is none to deliver. Your hands shall be lifted up over your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. Verse 10. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots. And I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all thy strongholds. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Verse 13. Your carved images I will also cut off, and your sacred pillars from your midst. You shall no more worship the work of your hands. I will pluck your wooden images from your midst. Thus I will destroy your cities, and I will execute vengeance and anger and fury on the lands that have not heard. There's a lot of popcorn going off. <laughs> Creation, the cross, the birth, the myths, the, the end myths, times, the myths. standing yes. up, the he shalls, and then the I wills. Hmm. Man, there's a lot of that's actually, I think it's seven he shalls, and there's eight I wills. Hmm. So it's always interesting because there's seven shepherds and eight princes. Prophetic imagery here happening. Yeah, so we've got the remnant, we've got the mm. the latter rain, the dew in the showers. Yep. He's coming forth coming to be the forth. ruler in Israel. Yep. Coming out, coming forth. Yep. yep. Oh yeah. This is beautiful. I thought four was was full of uh, a lot of <laughs> a lot of neat imagery, but five is really yeah. Really seems to start to bring out some uh, some promises. Verse 4, they're standing. Yes. Yep. He shall stand. Yep. Standing. Michael, standing. Michael standing up. Yeah. Standing and feeding. It's like the princely and the shepherd. You know, the prince and the shepherd are both are both yes. there. That's, 
That's right. That's why that seven shepherds and eight principal men was, I, I just found very, uh, yeah, very interesting. I had no idea what it was, but. Well, that's the kingly and the priestly together. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Meaning all, all pieces of the kingdom are in place. Yeah. And he's going forth. Yep. Mm. Yeah, those that first that first part of that first part of it seems like a judgment judgment out there, you know, against the Assyrian people. But then there's this there's a shepherdly action that comes with the I wills. I mean, doesn't a shepherd feed you with things so that you can tear it so that those idols are torn down around you? Yeah, in a sense, right. you know, the, the, he cuts out the witchcraft and the soothsayers and the graven images, and you know, plucks out the groves and. And he destroys the cities, right? Yes. Yeah. That's right. And why is he, why, and he's not destroying cities in a sense, but he's destroying the essence of what cities, cities are. They, it's men coming together to build these great things unto themselves. Co congregating Throw and down, re rebellion yeah. against God. Throw yeah. down thy strongholds. Yeah. They don't need God. They've got it on their own, like the Tower yeah. of Babel. Yes. Yeah. You know, and hence why he cuts off the horses and the chariots, right? So, yeah, because again, it's manly, manly power. Trusting in the armor power. flesh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right. And he and raises witch, witchcrafts means that, you know, they're going to somebody else rather than him mm -hmm. for wisdom. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, amen. We see that well, it, in Revelation 18, you also have the sorceries or witchcrafts. Mm -hmm. By thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think, and it shall be in that day that everything that they believed in will be dispelled. They mm -hmm. will no longer be there. Yes. And they realize that because the true king is being revealed, yeah. everything that falls falls apart. Mm -hmm. Yes, in his presence. Yeah. Witchcraft is as a sin of rebellion, it tells us in First Samuel. And I can, I can, I can start to see the the essence of a chiasm out here, but I haven't really nailed it yet. Just haven't figured it out. I think it's one of those ones that kind of takes multiple leads, like a sheet of music. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's not the simple step ladder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It becomes, like it, it groups itself out. Like yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But you know, it's here, and the natural one would put it into verse verse eight, I would guess, but. Yeah. That, that's where the remnant becomes like the king. Yeah. Because now, is that Revelation? Yeah. 14. So that's that's what it means then by the, the lion. Yes. And now yeah. now they're like, the, the, the remnant is now like a lion. Oh. Because they're becoming like the lion of the tribe of Judah has become their king. Hmm. And now they, and they, see, he, he's, you know, conquered all the enemies in their hearts. And mm. that's why they represent him and look like him. And he uses them to, to go after the strongholds of the enemy. You know, like in Joel mm. chapter 2, uh, now the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. Mm. And they receive that the power, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord as the dew from the Lord and the showers upon the grass. So that's that's, right. that's the power that gives them the 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 power. The, the, yeah. Yes. The dominion, if, if you will, right? Because then you're really it's their connection about, with him. Yeah, it's their connection with him. They've entered into his presence and mm -hmm. chosen to never yeah. leave his presence ever again. Yeah. That's in uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, 6 and 7, I guess you can say. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who troubled you. And to you, 
who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from the heavens with his mighty angels. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's that's in the, Christ in the, on the cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when then, he comes in that day to be glorified with his saints and to be admired among those who believe. And this, the, the power, the power again, I, it, it sounded like it's the, the tearing down of the strongholds. I mean, it's not, we're not and we're vanquishing them as, as enemies so much as tearing down their stronghold or their power. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I don't think this is afterwards either. I think it's in our presence yeah. that it's happening. Yeah. Well, it's the, the stronghold of, of every deception and satanic, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah false way of thinking that has taken hold of your of us mm -hmm. those are the strongholds god's tearing down whatever, mm -hmm. whatever that idol or deception mm -hmm. might be yeah we're all going to fall apart mm. that's, the, that's the falling on your face in his presence experience mm. everything falls apart but then he strengthens you to stand up yeah and he adds in verse 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 10 that you know it's definitely not going to be our strength because he cuts off our horses in the midst of thee and he destroys thy chariots because isn't that talking about god's people that he doesn't they're not to rely on those things kind of like what we talked about earlier that's right it's also oh, oh, oh no i'm sorry <laughs> i was just going to say it's also you know the lord himself has horses and chariots you know, the, you have the horses in the first four seals, and they have a parallel in Zechariah 6 with the chariots, which are the four spirits of the heavens that go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth that have mm -hmm. the true message. And so here are counterfeit messages that we've made up ourselves, and he's going to destroy those. All, yeah. all the false mm -hmm. gospels, all the the false interpretations that we cling to mm. as well so is the remnant of jacob israel here israel yes Says the remnant of jacob shall be in the midst of many people yes and the remnant of jacob shall be among the gentiles in the midst of many people yes well what's jacob well. especially known for uh, connected yeah. with Israel, who was wrestling with God. Yeah, yeah, and then he could, then his name could become yeah. Israel. Yes. Yeah. Here, here are ones that are wrestling with God, and he's, and they're overcoming. They're prevailing with God because God right. is with them, because the right. King is with them, and and he has his anointing in the latter rain. So it's the time when he's he's been anointed, so that we can be anointed. So that we can become Israel because they're using Jacob. They're not. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. See, because he says, it says in verse two, he becomes ruler in Israel. Mm -hmm. So they have, a, you have a remnant of Jacob, but he becomes ruler in Israel. Those who are transformed into Israel are because he's their ruler. Yeah. He's their standard. He's their measure he's their king he, he he's the one who gets the victory for them you're talking mm -hmm. about three right not two then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of israel yeah well also in, in is the children two. of god how do yeah, you see out, out of thee shall he come forth unto thee that is to be ruler in israel oh, okay and then it's yes they become the children of israel they return to the children of israel in verse right. three yes mm. amen that's there's the transformation right okay yes i may have missed it but from from 10 on he's cutting out all the worldly things out of them out of us mm -hmm. mm. yeah. you know, because we're, we're we're not part of that spiritual world yeah the, the dependency yes and he, he does it thing. by oh sorry no go ahead brother craig no, you, you you go ahead. No, I, I just it it just you know like we talked about there was uh, their dependency on on you know on, on the on the might on their might and power their dependency on on the the, the source sorceries and witchcrafts of this world and and the idolatry of this world yeah 
Yes. I was just going to say he, he, the one of the the means that he uses to to remove those attachments that we have to the world is is he, he actually you know he you know the the first promise of the gospel was that was that Christ the, the seed would would crush the head of the serpent but the serpent would be allowed to to bruise his heel and he, the word for heel in Hebrew is Jacob. Mm -hmm. Where we get the name Jacob? Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's the re the remnant of Jacob here. Satan, you know, God allows Satan to bruise us, but it mm -hmm. actually has a redemptive purpose. Yeah. It's, it's it's just enough and in those ways that address the, the 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 rebellious things in me that I'm holding on to 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 lead me to give them up. That's the same thing with, with Job, I think. I mean, to me, it sounds like the same thing with Job is, yeah. yeah. It's, it wasn't God, God doing it so much as he was allowing, allowing Satan the leeway. That's right. Up to the point of, up to the point of death, at least in Job's case. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. And that, that God was, was weighing and balancing that whole process. That's actually what he says to Job later on um, through Elihu is that he's uh, he's the one who who uh, balances the clouds. Mm. Uh, the clouds are a symbol of, of angels, and mm. so he's the Lord for every person is balancing, you know, what the evil angels are allowed to do and what the he commissions the the, the holy angels to do, you know, at the same time. And that whole process for each one of us, God is is balancing those clouds in a way that we can't possibly comprehend. Which mm. is what what God is really saying to to Job is, you know, if I can do these things, why are you questioning? Mm. I obviously understand better than you. <laughs> mm. You just have to accept that by faith. When you look at verse two, when it says, "But you, Bethlehem," and Bethlehem means house of bread and Ephrathath that meaning means fruitful mm. Mm. the fruitful house of bread huh yeah mm. and that's Christ yeah that was Christ yeah 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 yep. yeah my notes it says this was the birthplace of King David as well as of his most Eminent descendants, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So you, 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 it's all, it's all there. That all comes out of the, the yeah. house of bread and being fruitful. No, yep. Amen. And that travailing brings forth. Yep. Yes. Brings forth. Verse one, we see how. You know, you know, the father would allow the son to be smitten. Yes. Smite the judge with a rod upon the cheek. Yeah. And if, if we're becoming like the lion, he's, he's going to allow that same smiting. And, you know, that, that came from <laughs> a combination of the, the unfaithful church and the corrupt government. Mm. It'll be the, the same... The same union again mm. in these last days. What is that term? Um, you know, at least my King James says, Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. Mm -hmm. I know it's a numbered, numbered group. They're actually. Slightly, they're the same root, but there's actually two words there. Mm -hmm. There's to gather together is gadad. It's a verb to get to gather together or assemble by troop. It also means to penetrate, to cut, attack, invade. Mm -hmm. To gather in crowds, to crowd together, to assemble. Mm -hmm. And then the other word of, for troops is gedud, and it means a band or a troop or an army or a company. 
So one, one seems to be more connected with the gathering process and the other one seems to be the group once it's been gathered. It's, it's, uh, it's a noun. One's a verb and one's a noun. So it's mm. sitting in the same root. Mm. You know, I, I know that, you know, we're certainly told that, you know, the, the wicked, for instance, will be, you know, you know, bundled together as branches to be burned. And uh, God does little gatherings as, as well mm -hmm. of, right. of the righteous in, in little bundles, yeah, small That's groups a, a together. Believer. Yeah, like 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 Church, this little oh, study, daughter study of truth is churches of believers. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. You see, he's laid siege against us. The uh, easy to read version, now strong city, gather your soldiers. They are surrounding us for the attack. They will hit the judge of Israel on the cheek with a stick. Like he, he, he's going to let Babylon, you know, surround us and, and come through and wipe out <laughs> mm. the city and the sanctuary. Mm hmm. That's that same pattern is going to repeat, but he'll preserve, you know, not, mm -hmm. not one Christian died in that siege, <laughs> we're told. He'll deliver his people, but he's going to be, you know, that's how he's going to draw attention ultimately to the truth is by Allowing the enemy to to take us captives. And that's 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 when he was able to use Daniel and his friends. That's where I was going to go with that too. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we're we're, we're never going to reach the whole world just by our own human methods of trying to, no. No. to evangelize in these places. God's God's mm. going to have to use. He just needs a few faithful ones that he can allow the crisis to go forward and use them as the witnesses in right. the to complete right. the process. Right. Those that will stand. Yes. Interestingly, with Daniel and his friends, they you know, it was the ones who, who first stood on the, the, the test connected with the health message that that later stood and the crisis became more explicitly about worship. Curious how we've just gone through a, a test on the health message. Mm. Yeah, the Village Church just did a really great weekend mm. of um, lectures on the right arm of the gospel. Amen. Yeah, they, they've been doing some of the best the best preaching in, in the past few years. Yeah. From a mainstream church. Yeah. No. Praise the Lord. Yeah, amen. Yeah, there's a lot in this chapter. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> His going forth are from old, from everlasting. Is the, the the I am the eternally existing one m making himself known? Amen. I am that I am. We were we were talking in Kentucky how you know if if your car is broken you you, you go to a mechanic. To try to get it fixed, and if you know your, you know the the brick on your outside of your house gets you know something wrong with it, you call a mason to, to fix that. Someone who knows what he's doing, and if if your problem is with your very existence or nature, well, then who do you have to call? You have to call on the name of of the I am, mm -hmm. the one mm -hmm. who is is existence. <laughs> He's the only one who can fix your existence. Mm. 
Mm. That's why that's why it's that that it's him who's coming forth means everything to us. But he's he's also a man at the same time. You can fully reconcile man to God. So you have the remnant three times there, right? You have the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. Then the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people. And yes. the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people. So that's a, you know, it's a process that's, that that's mm. three times being said. Three step process. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yep. There's a remnant among the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. That's those in the most holy place relationship connected with the seals and the remnant of Jacob in the midst of many people. Those are those in the holy place connected with the trumpets and then the remnant among the Gentiles. And this is the outer court. That's the outer court. Yeah. With the plagues. Yeah. Beautiful sister. Yeah. Good insights. Amen. Yeah. Those witnesses in each group mm -hmm. about the birth of the king. And of course, the birth of the king is is coronation language. You know, the king is born on his his coronation day, and so you know we we, we clearly see the first advent here or the first coronation, but we're also got the second coronation, and I wouldn't be surprised if the third coronation was somewhere here as well. Were you say, were you saying the uh, the I wills at the end that was the third coordination? Well, I was just that's that's possible. Yes, I mean that's when he ultimately will execute vengeance. And there's seven of them. Yeah, starting in verse ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will destroy the chariots. I will cut off the cities. I will cut off the witchcraft. Um, the graven images will I cut off, and let's see, where's the next one? I will pluck up the groves out of the city. Um, I will destroy the cities, the six, and then I will execute vengeance. That's seven, amen. And I believe there's seven or eight he shalls at the beginning of it, yeah. and that's why I thought the seven shepherds and the eight principal men that just something just resonated with. I wonder if that's because I was seeing a lot of the he shalls and the I wills. Because yeah. he comes, he comes, uh, he shall come forth. That's, that's his first he shall. Uh, he shall come forth to be the ruler of Israel. And then uh, let's see the next he shall, the remnant of his shall return unto the children stand. of Israel. He shall stand in the strength of the Lord. He, uh, he shall be great. Before that, it says they shall abide. But I'm thinking of his he shalls. And it says, uh, shall he be great unto the ends of the earth? And he shall be peace in verse 5. Uh, and then he talks about, about, and then he shall tread in our palaces. Is the yes. next one. And it says they shall waste. Uh, Thus shall he deliver us. So he shall deliver us. That's the next one. Hmm. And um, the remnant of Jacob will shall be, and the remnant of Jacob shall be, and I believe thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversary. But that's not that's not him. That's what he's letting us do. Hmm. And it shall come to pass, saith the Lord. But I thought there were seven or eight he shalls in there. Maybe I might not see them all, and I might miss some. But. Hmm. But there's a lot of they shalls too because he shall when he does yes. the he shall they they shall yes and also we shall <laughs> yes he shall they shall we shall <laughs> say that yeah. for the, for the seashore <laughs> <laughs> he shall she shall Yahweh she shall yes and the the seven with the eight also has allusions to the Feast of Tabernacles because that was the feast that was seven days and then an eighth day. Yes. Yep. That thought crossed my, my nugget too. Yeah. Yes. Amen. 
So would that would be the same thing with myths, since mm-hmm. there's three, and then there's the fourth one. Okay, amen. Mm. Yeah. So why does he strike them on the cheek? Hmm. I'll smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. Does he turn the other cheek? He does, hmm. doesn't he? Hmm. Well, that's about the revelation of his character. Hmm. And he, he was seen as the true king when he bore himself with such oh. calm reserve and dignity when they were smiting him. Yes, hmm. yes, yes. Yeah. He smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon his cheek. Yeah, that's that's when even Pilate saw. You know this. Yeah, this man has a kingly bearing. <laughs> mm. Mm. I find no fault in him. That's what he. Now at the second coronation, that's what we're going to go through. <laughs> mm. we're, we're repeating his experience, and here. He's living out that experience in and through each one of us who are his true witnesses. Mm. The ones yeah, who are... the New Testament say that I may suffer as he suffered. That's right. Uh, which apostle says that? I will. I just read that. Well, it all talks about how, you know, if we, we, we share in his sufferings, then we'll share in his glory as well. Mm. Which his glory came out of the sufferings, mm. his character. Mm. And that to me is a key key part of his his second coronation is when he all that he accomplished through Christ at the cross then becomes manifest in in his witnesses in in this final demonstration with a, a full demonstration of what his victory looks like in us. Mm. So, um, Assyria was still, was still, uh, the, the main power here wasn't, weren't they at this time at the time of Micah? Yes, and they they actually they were the power that conquered the the two kingdoms and actually began both of the seven times prophetic periods was right. when Syria first conquered the northern kingdom of Israel mm. in 723 BC and then the southern kingdom of Judah in 677 under Manasseh. So that God is pointing out, you know, they're they're the ones, you know, God God always has, you know, his people, and then his people become, you know, unfaithful and break covenant relationship with him. And then he uses an enemy and allows the enemy to conquer them and take them in captivity and and then and to, to kind of punish and chastise his people to try to bring them back into the right way. And he always, of which he always brings a remnant out of that who actually do get transformed. And then he punishes the very instrument that he used to chastise his people. Well, Mm -hmm. that's, that's true. But think about it is what are those people supposed to be doing while they're in captivity? Right. So they're shedding God's light. They're shedding like Daniel. He's, he's bringing the light to Nebuchadnezzar. That's their responsibility. Yeah. And then and then what are those nations are going to do with that? So they have been given the light. They have been given the three angels message. And now they have a choice. What am I going to do with that? Amen. You know? That's right. So, so, you know, careful how you say that because. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. That That's how he can judge them. Right. It's because he's first shown the light. Right. It was actually the light from the very ones that they had conquered. <laughs> were the ones who were shining the light to them. Right. So. Right. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego were already taught in that example. They were they were taught as children under right. under Josiah's reforms. Right. 
They, they grew up under Josiah's reforms. And that's how they, it was because of that early training that they were able to, to be the, the steadfast young men that they came to be. Mm. Yep. Revive the schools of the S- Sister White says that explicitly. Mm. Connected mm. to Josiah's reforms. Which which are actually a type of the 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 Advent pioneers and the reforms under them. Mm. All that happens under King Josiah is a type of the Advent movement. At the beginning of the early Advent movement. Mm. Amen. So I think I missed it because I was working on chiasms. Um, <laughs> Amen. What was the what? What did you think the significance of the seven shepherds and the eight princes of men were about? Did Did you discuss that? I thought I was keeping an ear to when that came up. I mean, I suggested it might be pointing to the piece of tabernacles. And earlier, we also had the idea of the priestly and the kingly, that the three parts of the kingdom are coming together. Yeah, Yeah, I was trying to find to tie that in with a chiasm parallel or similarity to kind of give a little more, maybe, clarity to to what that might be. I'm I'm having a little trouble. Well, maybe if you did Micah as the whole book in a chiasm, that would fit somewhere. Oh, I'm sure. Thanks. I'll just work on that in the next five minutes. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. That'll keep them busy. You're welcome. And let's throw in Revelation because I'm seeing similarities there, too. I'm sure it will jump right out at me. Now, now what about Genesis back to us, and creation okay? here? Okay. Next week. Uh, Oh. Well, I could see when it talks about <laughs> this man shall be the peace mm-hmm. in verse 5 could possibly be connected with like verse 9 thy hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries and all the enemies shall be cut off and if all the enemies are cut off that sounds like peace to me mm. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of found a, a, a kind of a verse grouping 11. in verses 7 through and 8 or 9. I don't know what to do with 9, so that, that's a good answer. I'll throw 9 up there, and that'll tie up the first. And then um, 10 through 15 kind of has its own little thing going on there, too. Yeah, uh, again, too. not quite a step ladder, but it's kind of yes um, could almost be seen as one unit yes yes like in, in a chiasm like a section like 10 to 15 could be thought of as just like one one thing yeah and then i think when i get the sections of one through six or maybe there's two sections in there that then i think if all of those will begin to form a bigger picture uh, yeah, I, I could definitely see personally verse seven being the center, mm. with the, the remnant yeah. in the midst with the showers, the, the latter yeah. rain. Yeah. yeah, but see, it comes up again. It repeats itself in verse eight: the remnant of Jacob, the remnant of Jacob yeah. in the midst of many people, in the midst of many people, like the dew from the Lord. Now that's a little tricky, like the lion and the beast of the forest will come back to that one. But like the showers on the grass, um, the young lions and the flocks of the sheep. Well, where do you bring your flocks of sheep, right? To the grass, which delay not for a man nor wait for the child or man. And what's going to happen? It's going to go through. He's going to tread down. He's going to tear in pieces and there is none to deliver. There's, there's none stopping it. So I, I can kind of see that stepping thing going on there, the ABC, ABC kind of rhythm. But I, I, I haven't quite figured out, do from the Lord, how that would tie in like the lion among the beasts of the field. That's my wink link there. Well, one is the po- one gives you the power to have the dominion. Okay. You know, Craig had Craig had kind of brought mm-hmm. that up. Yeah. Uh, 
back at the beginning, um, you know, that it's got, it's the, the power that comes from God allows gotcha. to, to knock down these, uh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. These, these falsehoods yeah. or the power to, 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 to confront the falsehoods. Gotcha. And treading, treading down, that's dominion language or kingship language. Mm, right. Under right. your feet. Right. Right. So then your hand shall be lifted up over your adversaries and all your enemies shall be cut off. And that ties back into, uh, where did you say up above? Five, and he shall be their peace. Is that where yes. you're saying you were well, five. Five and six? And this man I think shall that be reads the peace. better without one or he, actually. Because that's added in there. And I think it from five it's before that it's what four says that will be the peace it, and this shall be the peace is what four says that i i i, I don't know because i think one one or man is added isn't it in in verse five verse five and this Oh man, yeah, on mine, man, as I tell. Yeah, that. it's kind of like when we read somewhere in the New Testament, and oh, oh, uh, on this, on this, I shall build the church, but it wasn't the rock; it was what the Lord said above that. On this, on His testimony, that that's how the church will be built. I think it's the same thing in five when you omit that. It's because of what He's done all through four that this shall be peace. Well, yeah. my, in the ESV version, it says, and he shall be their peace. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It, and and it, again, it's one of those he shall, right? Yes. Mm. yes. Mm -hmm. That's so, right. So they're talking about the strength of the Lord, the Lord, right. the Lord, the Lord in verse four. Exactly. And he shall be their peace. So mm. go back to the King James, though. Um and this man shall be the peace. Yep. Same idea. Yep. Yeah. 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 Because he's still the man. Right. Um, and the says one shall be peace. Yeah. I, I just I think point, what he does above it. Yeah. I pointed out in Sabbath school class this last week that, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, Christ coming back in the upper room and uh, seeing that, you know, presenting himself to the disciples and with all of that that's going on and the hubbub and the excitement and you know the whole revelation you know jesus just sort of says hey guys you know been three days kind of hungry here you got anything to eat you, you, you know <laughs> it's <laughs> like there's the human side of him after he just he went through everything that he did and then there's still that human man side that says hey you know, I kind of got some hunger pains down here. What do you got to eat? Yeah, at that time, I bet you they they realized his his humanity and his divinity. Just really what what he did. In taking well, realized out. it, but not realized it. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, he's with you one moment and then he's not, and then he's mm -hmm. not with you, and then suddenly he's there. You, you know, mm -hmm. that's not human right you know and yet he's hungry but yeah exactly oh he just fell off the moon <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't worry I'll, I'll pull myself back up <laughs> no one of my uh uh friends from pioneer valley academy took that with their camera the other the last full moon actually ted yeah ted bauer oh beautiful i'll, I'll give him the credit when it when it talks about the dew of the lord Deuteronomy 32 2 says, My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as mm. the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because mm. I will publish the name of the Lord and ascribe greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work well, is Genesis, perfect. it's creation. What was that scripture, Brother Craig? It's Deuteronomy 32, and I was. Verse 2, right? Verse 2, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you, and then man. actually in, in Hosea, yeah. Hosea 10, 12 says that he'll rain righteousness upon you. So the doctrine is the doctrine of righteousness, right? Righteousness by faith in Christ, the true king. 
And it also says in, in Hosea 10, 12, it says that, uh, I don't know, how did I lose that? Uh, so do yourselves in righteousness, weep in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness mm. upon you. Mm. Amen. That's, that's, the, that's the righteousness. And then, I'm sorry, Hosea 6 is the one that says, he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. Yeah, that's that's an awesome one. 6, 1, and 2, right? Yeah, so, uh, 6, 1, 2, and 3, really. Yeah. And then, you know, there's there's the, the two days he'll revive us, the third day he'll raise us up. Or, yes. Or, or, allusion yeah. to the cross. Yes. And then he comes forth. The, his going forth is after that midpoint in the midst of the pattern. And yeah. then his going forth is out of that. And he, the message and the reign of righteousness by faith and the power of the Holy Spirit in the early and latter reign is made available. Hmm. At the first advent, it was after the midst of the pattern of seven, he came forth and, and it was the early rain. And now at the second coronation, it's the it's the latter rain and the kingly anointing. Mm. And what's what's the, the tribe of David's um, emblem, symbol? I don't know. Lion, I guess. I think, isn't it? The lion? Yeah. So that, that would tie it. That definitely would tie it there. Yes. He's right. from, new, of Judah. He's from, from the, the line Lord, of Judah. like a line young of lion. Of Judah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Judah. That's right. And that's how he's described in Revelation 5. Uh, his coronation right. scene. Right. Right. He's, he's okay. Open, begins opening the scroll. Okay. You know, on this, you know, on this rain, on this rain, uh, Psalm 72 um verses well six seven eight and nine it just it kind of stood out to me it says he shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth so very similar to the the micah chapter in verse verse uh seven yes. you know and then and then it says yeah in his days shall the righteous flourish in abundance of peace and then we see the peace because he is the man of peace um and then he yes. shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river ends onto the earth. And because of his dominion, he's imparting, yeah. you know, in that our dominion. And they that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him and his enemies shall lick the dust. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, verse one, he shall give, uh, give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. Hmm. He shall That's judge that. thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. So it's the judgment of the living. Amen. That's all in Psalm 72 as well. So that's all Psalm 72. Amen. In fact, oh, yes. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. In, in my Blue Letter Bible, it's entitled, the, the section is called The Reign of the Righteous King. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. That's a, that, that's a perfect reference. You know, it's also the second day, right? When you look at the Jew, because he says, let the waters under heaven be gathered together into one place. Mm -hmm. And then it continues that the gathering together of the waters, he called seas. And that's the gathering of the people. That's 5-1. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the gathering I'll of the gather people. Myself. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's the labor. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. The seas. Yep, that's yeah. right. A sea of glass. The brass sea. Yes. We're going to stand on the sea of glass. Mm. The ones who've gotten the victory, that's why they, they defeat the enemies here, is because they're under their feet. They're uh, mm. on the sea of glass. Wow. I still have that cassette tape on the sea of glass. The, stri the strife of the seas has stopped, and now the sea is glass. Mm. Mm. Amen. Was the rightful yeah. dominion has been restored. Mm. I always thought it was interesting. The, the sky is blue when, when it's a normal day, and blue in the scriptures is connected with obedience to the law. Mm. That they were put the ribbon of blue on the borders of their garments to remind them to keep the law of God. Mm. And if if the waters are calm and still, 
it perfectly reflects the sky and the waters are blue. That's right. Uh, if the yeah. waters are, are stormy, if the winds of strife are blowing and there's lots of waves, then the blue goes away and the, 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 the sea becomes kind of grayish. Yep. It's no longer reflecting dark. the sky. Yep. The dark billows, yeah. Yes. So, Amen. Well, the blue Amen. too, isn't Beautiful. it? The that was cut out from the throne was the blue stones. That's the right. The sapphire first... stones. Yes. Now that that's beautiful. You see, it's the, the the coming forth is out of the fruitful bread basket. It's it's only it's only a, a, a little ones among the thousands of Judah. Yes. It's the tribe of Judah, but it, the remnant is just a little one among the thousands of mm. Judah. That's actually bearing fruit because they're eating the bread. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. House Out of, of thee, bread. he shall come forth. Mm. A house of bread and fruit. And the seed, the seed is in the fruit to spread to others. To reproduce. Mm -hmm. The seed is in the fruit. And out of I... thee, those little ones among the thousands of Judah, it's out of thee, he shall from Christ, will come forth and be seen as the true ruler mm -hmm. in those who are Israel, who prevail with God. Amen. Isn't he that that is within us, he is the seed? Right. Yeah. So it that is seed word. is within us hmm. because he is in us. Yes. And it will bear fruit. And it will bear fruit. Yes. With more seed that will provide seed yeah. for others. Yes. Multiplies the seed. Yeah. It makes you think about when you think about that, his seed is within us and what we, what, what we, should allow him to do in order for that seed to um, yeah. yeah and that's the ground whatever whatever that seed lands yeah mm. we saw that sue was sue was watching watching this um i don't know not a, not a documentary but anyways it was it was these um <clears throat> these nom nomadic what they're iraqis or iranians iranians yeah iranians but they were out in their wilderness and they they build their own place, and they were and they I'm were, watching they it. were sowing sowing their seed in rocky ground. I mean, they yeah. plow that <laughs> field, and there's rocks there. And I said to Donnie, "This is so <laughs> apropos when you're actually seeing what they're doing. That <laughs> they're tossing the barley, hmm. and then the tractor comes down to to you know." put it break in the ground but it's still t yeah. tons of rocks yeah. that yeah. that's there and like that, it, it makes so yeah. much sense when he says you know when jesus was talking about the, the yeah about the break sowing. up your foul ground it really gave me a visual yeah amen it was it was yeah it was perfect it yeah was it's just amazing and yeah, the only modern part was the tractor that was it yeah. <laughs> And actually, by when you actually use the oxen and the yoke and the plow that way, that you, you there's a lot more important lessons that we yeah. we, we lose with the tractor. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Donnie, going back to your you shells and he shells, so there there's the rhythm there. I know you talked about it, but I, don't, I didn't know if you pulled this out. So forgetting what verse is that gets distracting. There's mm -hmm. a you shell. He shall, he shall, they shall. He shall, he shall, they shall, he shall. Wow. You got it? Mm -hmm. So there's there's that rhythm. You shall, he shall, he shall, they shall. He shall, he shall, they shall, he shall. Deliver mm -hmm. us from the Assyrians. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's what I'm saying. There, you're right. There's a whole bunch of kind of stuff going on in here, and yeah. you know, I get hung up with concepts with 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 the words chiastic. I mm -hmm. have a hard time seeing the 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 rhythm yeah. of of what's right. being said. Yeah, that's like in these his I wills. They're they're intermixed with the cutoffs too. 
you know, there's, that, there's a lot right. of those I wills. Wow. Yeah. It, it's interesting. Assyria and, and Nimrod. Nimrod was generally associated with, with Babylon. Wow. And of course, Assyria was as well. Assyria actually, uh, you know, controlled Babylon for a time before mm -hmm. Babylon arose. So, and, you know, in, in some sense, Assyria in that context can be a symbol of the king of the south and Babylon can be a symbol of the king of the north. Mm. So he's going he's gonna to lay waste to both mindsets. Ah, uh, Assyria with the land of Nimrod. And Nimrod, he was he was the, the strong hunter, right? Yes. And it was considered mm. a fortified city. So yes. not necessarily the man, but of what he represented. Exactly. The the, the whole mindset of of Babylon really initiated with with Nimrod. Oh really? Yeah. And it was myth it was a mystical yes and, and they, they, they yeah. even like they they deified him they worshiped him like yes. a god later you know? yeah yeah so that's king that's all king of the north con concepts you know yes mm. which is serious started perhaps the same way but and, and exactly they're down, and they're down in their, no. in their decline, they were king of the south. They, of course, like all kingdoms, they started king of the north, mystical. Yeah. But by the time it came to the time of Babylon, it was they were the, they represented the king of the south. That's when they were, you know, you see that when the, the king of Assyria came up against Hezekiah, and he he talked about how great his gods were, and how he destroyed all the other gods, and nothing there was nothing Jehovah could do to stop his god. Yeah. That, that was that really boastful king of the south mindset there. Yes. Who, who is Jehovah that I should obey him? Yes. Mm -hmm. And and we see what happened. He, he got wiped out. <laughs> right. Yes. We're doing some work around our house. Um, and we did some, we cleared some land up in Stockbridge many years ago. And I was thinking about, you know, the first you come through, you cut out the trees. Then you come through with the excavator and you pull out the roots. And then you come through with the bulldozer and you put them either in a big pile and bury them or a big pile and you burn them, right? So again, back to your I will cut out. There's the four. I will cut out. I will cut out. I will cut out. I will cut out. I will root out. Okay. It's pulling this stump right out of the ground. I've, I've topped it. Now, now we're going. And then I will execute vengeance mm -hmm. you know now now they're in the pile of fire and they will be oh. destroyed mm -hmm. yeah that's well done very yeah. nice very nice also i hadn't thought of it until you said that but uh cutting is connected with the idea of making a covenant anciently you, you would cut a covenant mm -hmm. so here you know the messiah is confirming the covenant in, in this you know, restoration to him back to king is part of that covenant promise. And then he's cutting off the enemies as part of fulfilling that covenant promise. And who is the prophet that had to, what, cut the bulls and walk down the middle of them and come Abraham, back when, yes. when God was forming that covenant with him, right? That's right. Yes. That's where we kind of see clearly this cutting idea connected with covenant. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the same, uh, looks like the same word all the way through ka Karaf. Yes. Karaf. Yeah. Yes. Karaf. Yeah. To destroy or consume, specifically to covenant. Yeah. That's interesting. It says uh, when he explicitly, in, in Genesis 15, when the ah. Lord made a covenant with him, it's the same word. Cut a yes. covenant. Originally by cutting flesh and passing between the pieces. That's yes. the other yep, definition in there. That's very interesting. But again, it's also to destroy, you know, yeah. hew down, to hew down. So isn't that what they the cutting? Yep. Isn't yeah. that what they did when he had all the pieces of the, the bodies? Didn't he 
cut. Uh, he walked, walked he in walked, the midst, midst of, yeah, walked uh, through them. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. The, the only one time before that it's used is when all flesh would be cut off in the flood. Oh. Because mm. it's, it's like the positive and negative side of the symbol. Yes. yes. Right. All right. You too. Father, we thank you that we could come together and study your word. And we thank you uh, for for uh, for how you just give give inspiration to each each one and and you know with each one they're they're unique and and as we were pulling them together we were just getting this picture of, of you father and just how you are just all encompassing you're the all in all so we thank you for that and we thank you for this opportunity and we thank you for the that you would bless uh e each of us bless our families and be with us uh as we draw near to thee with your loving kindness, we thank thee in Jesus' name. Amen.